So in this environment, I've got a number of different virtual machines in two different virtual networks, a blue virtual network and a red virtual network. And the blue is actually split into two virtual subnets. So I have a pool for each of them. And the red is just a single virtual subnet. So ordinarily, you can actually see I've got overlapping IP schemes between blue and red. So normally these would not be able to communicate with anything outside of that virtual network. So if I jump out to one of these and let's say I look at my blue VM1. So this is blue VM1. I would be able to ping other machines in that virtual subnet, but no others. So I want to use a gateway to expand that. So I created a virtual machine. This is running 2012R2. I've turned off the firewall. And additionally, I've actually gone ahead and installed let's just minimize this down. So go to my manage, add roles and features. Out of remote access, make sure we've installed direct access and VPN and routing. And on the feature side, it's just from the remote server administration tools. I need the remote access module for PowerShell. So I've enabled those things. I've turned off the firewall. And the next thing then is within Virtual Machine Manager to go ahead and create that gateway. Now I've already done all this ahead of time, but essentially what I would do is I go to my fabric, I scroll down to my network services, I would create a new network service. If I just open up the one I already created, she would have gone through, give it a name, give it a manufacturer. So I would have selected Microsoft and Microsoft Windows Server Gateway. I give it the credentials for that virtual machine. So it's not domain joined. So it's a local admin run as account. The connection string is the host that's running the VM and then the name of the VM. So that was that gateway VM I created. Oh, sorry. Provider is just Microsoft Windows Server Gateway and you would hit the test. And the important part of what you want to see, there's three key tests, test open connection, test capability discovery, test system info. You then say which host group can use it. And then the connectivity, this is saying you actually go ahead and configure after you create it. But I'm sort of jumping to that step. So you'd like to do properties, connectivity. So the front end, this is the network that you want to enable connectivity to through this gateway. So this would make, in my case, another lab network. It could be the internet. It could be your corp network. The back end connection is the virtualization network. So this is my Hyper-V network virtualization. Now the other key point I should have pointed out about the virtual machine for that gateway is when you configure that virtual machine, so let me just jump over to it. What's really important from a properties perspective is, let's open up properties quick. For my hardware, I'm going to have two network adapters at least. So I obviously one for the back end, the, the virtualization, one for the front end. I may have a management one, I may have a clustering one. Now the one that's connected to the front end, i.e. the network you want to connect to, the internet, corp, that's going to be connected to a regular network, no problem. The one that's connected to the back end, you must make sure it's not connected to any VM network. So by default, one will be selected. So you'd hit browse and hit clear selection before you do any of this other configuration, before I created that gateway. And then you select standard switch and just select the switch that has the connectivity, but it's not connecting actually to a VM network. It's gonna go straight to the switch. That's the key point. And that's effectively you have a gateway up and running. The only thing left to do is actually connect the VM networks to use the gateway. So I went into the blue network. I look at my properties, connectivity. I say I wanna add connectivity. I'm going to use network address translation because the IP schemes in those virtual networks are not routable on my standard network. And I select the gateway device. That's it. And I did exactly the same thing for my red network. I selected that same gateway so I can have multiple NATs supported through a single gateway instance. And then if I actually looked at that gateway box again, this is that gateway. I got the PowerShell. 
I can actually now see if I look at my net compartments, I've got a compartment for the default and then one for the blue, one for the red. And I can even see the different actual interfaces for that virtual network sort of NAT translation. And really the upside of all that means this VM could now actually go ahead and access external resources. So I can actually go ahead and fire up Internet Explorer and then I'm browsing the web because that network it was connected to can actually go through and access the internet. And that's it. I mean, that's in a nutshell how hard it is to go ahead up and set up a gateway for virtual networks.